right, guys, welcome back. Uh, another podcast. We're going to uh, today. We're gonna gonna kind of catch you up on a few things. Um, gonna break out of the question and answer type format and do. A, we'll touch on a few things. Um, for I, I think there's I think there's value in multiple um, aspects of what we're gonna talk about today, and we're gonna focus on. We're gonna talk about Bella. Um, I've had a few questions coming in about how's her season going. Um, we have been hunting with her. If you're following us on Instagram, you'll have seen some of that stuff. Um, have we, we haven't really, we hunted, we did post a Bella Be Good series video of her first hunt, which was real tame, um, not intentionally, but it ended up really, it worked out nicely. Shot a few birds over her, um, nothing perfect uh, by, by any stretch of the imagination, but real good connecting of the dots from training to hunting um that's in a bella be good episode we also this last week we we kind of filmed another one um in between there we did hunt we didn't film any of that stuff ben did we up north we, we went on a couple hunts um we shot some ducks over her on some morning hunts we went up grouse hunted with some of our some friends of ours and we were duck hunting in the morning right in front of the cabin and then we would go grouse hunt in the afternoon and and hunt woodcock and grouse and had a really nice couple days there um, got two nice little duck shoots in uh, again real controlled we didn't shoot a lot of birds um, we had more shooting more birds um, than we had that first time out but it was very very much controlled uh, we had a little bit of bad luck a couple ducks that she swam out to and then they flew off on her um, which we ended up having to kind of go and, and hunt as cripples and, and it ended up fine it ended up um, Everything I thought was real positive. So then we got to this point this last weekend, um, and we it's gotten cold here. So things have changed. Those were all relatively warm hunts. Um, things have changed. It's gotten a little bit cold. We got a we we tried out a Versa vest, which is made by Mo Marsh. Um, it's a vest for your dog, like a neoprene vest. Except the difference with this one is, it's 100% adjustable. So it's customized. You can customize the size to each each dog. Um, it's made up of five panels that are like the heaviest duty Velcro stuff we've ever seen. Uh, it took Ben and I to separate the pieces. But what's really interesting about it is, is as we pieced it together on her, we got it to fit her and we can make it make subtle adjustments or dramatic adjustments pretty easily. Um, I have, you know, which counting Bella, we've got four dogs here, um, three of our own Bella, and each one of them would require adjustments to fit right and I can do it all with that one vest. Um, it took her a while to get used to it. Uh, we we did a Bella Be Good episode with her on it and she just was so uncomfortable it like almost locked her up. It made her, she just didn't want to, she couldn't move. Um, that was kind of a, it was an interesting reaction. Um, she was uncomfortable and so when she got uncomfortable like that she literally shut down. Um, she w was unable to function. And so that's the first time I've really seen her out of her element that much and it affect her that way. So, you know, now I'm thinking back on it and I go, okay, that probably should have st stood out to me a little bit more. But anyway, we got through it. We did an episode on it because I think it's an important part of like, that's a good spot to introduce the dog to something new in the yard. Um, it kind of leads into what, what, what we're going to talk about on our next hunt. So we put that vest on because we were planning on going on doing a duck hunt. It was going to be cold. We actually broke a little bit of ice going into this flooded timber that we hunted. Um, so it, well, when we first got in there, well, there was a, a, a thin layer of ice on top. So the vest actually was beneficial from a temperature standpoint, um, helping to keep her warm. We hunted her so that, so that was like, that was like the day before we went hunting, wasn't it? So probably not quite enough time um, to truly get her comfortable. Um, fast forward 24 hours, we took her into a, a, a flooded timber, a great little spot to duck hunt. It was one of Ben's buddy's spots. Um, myself, my son, Ben, and his buddy, Tori, the four of us went in with Bella. And I brought Bella because just Bella because I thought I knew we knew there were gonna be a lot of birds Ben and Tori had shot their limit out of it the last two shoots that they went in there which was the previous weeks the birds were certainly not going anywhere there were more coming in so as we went in there we knew there was gonna be a lot of shooting um, a lot of birds a lot of opportunity and I thought 
bring one dog, Bella, focus on her, allow for her a lot of opportunity, which is what we were kind of lacking in the previous duck hunts because they were pretty calm, they were pretty um, low, low excitement, um, not a lot of birds, just real manageable extensions of training. This was not going to be something that was like anything we've done in training. So we go into it and we brought her in and we hunted her out of a mole marsh elevated, what do you call that, a Versa, Versa blind? Is that what it's called? Or Visablind? Visalab or something. Invisalab. Invisalab. It's, a, it's basically a little blind on an elevated platform. Um, knew we wouldn't have an issue with an elevated platform because she's used to place training. Um, working out of that blind, maybe a little bit of uh, concern, but I've worked her out of a blind very similar to it on the ground. When, to, when I talk about a blind, I mean like a little dog blind, um, basically a little kennel. Um, and so she's worked out of them on the ground before, so I didn't have a lot of issue, a lot of concerns with that. So we went in, and right off the bat, it was a lot of birds, wood ducks and mallards, and lots of them. And so as it was getting light, um, we were just finishing getting set up. We had birds in the decoys. The one thing that I want to really hit right away is one of the great things about Bella right now, because we're going to talk a lot, a lot about a lot of things that went, didn't go well. Um, there, was, there was plenty of negatives on this hunt. So a few of the things that went really well and have gone well from the start is her steadiness. She steadies a rock. There's zero, zero risk of her breaking. She's not going to break. Um, she's quiet. She doesn't make a peep in, this, in the blind, um, whether it be like a shooting blind or one, uh, the dog blind. Um, she's, she's excellent mannered. And so that doesn't take away from the hunt regardless of how well things go on or don't go on from a hunting standpoint, she never takes away from the experience. Uh, she enhances it and adds to it. So that's, I'm really happy with that. That completely goes back to the amount of focus in, that we put on foundation. Um, it's 100% the building blocks. So I look at our foundation with her and I say, it's really strong, it's really good. Now, as you start to move up the, the pyramid here, of difficulty and challenges and things that are more formal from a hunting standpoint, we lack a lot of it um, to be expected. Uh, we, you know, if hunting season started, so we started hunting. I feel like she was prepared to start hunting. She's not prepared to handle every situation. Um, this this hunt in particular, we recognized that. We realized it. Um, not until it frustrated me greatly. I'm gonna show, you're gonna see that. We're gonna talk about that. So. As we got into it, we bring her in and we start shooting some birds. And the one thing that was clearly evident was we had the we had the um, we had that that vest on her. Um, what's it called? Versa vest. Versa vest. Versa vest. We had that on her, and it took away from her comfort level, no question. So I said to Ben, I said, "I'm going to take it off. I know it's cold. I'm going to take it off because it literally was locking her up from the start." Um, very similar to how we started out in the yard. And we, what we didn't have the luxury of doing was we didn't have the luxury of kind of loosening her up it, like we did in the yard. And if you watch Bella Be Good, the series, you'll see how we did that. Well, we threw out all requirements of any type of steadiness. We just played with her like she was a young, like a puppy, just getting her to move around and getting her comfortable wearing this thing. It just felt uncomfortable to her. That's all it was, which was totally going through her physically and mentally, I think. So we didn't have that luxury in the blind. So I said, I'm going to take it off. So we took it off when we were in the field. We, what became very clear and evident from that point on was the idea of working in this type of water. So it was water that was at times, it was flooded timber that was probably up to my knees most of the time, up to my waist at times, and maybe up to my halfway to my knees at times. But it was completely littered with dead trees that had fallen down and branches and, and this, this woods is dead. Uh, it flooded, and it's five years ago, I think Ben said it flooded, and since then all the trees have died. And so a lot of them have tipped over. It's just a mess. It is a jungle in there. It is a, it's, I cramped up that night because I was walking in waders and trying to get through this stuff, and it literally was really difficult to navigate. And I'm a person. Now for the, this young dog, it was really tough too. She had a hard time, I think, with even feeling comfortable that she should swim or walk. When, when she did, she was going through so much crap on the bottom. It was just a really challenging situation. So that's not making an excuse for her. 
that's explaining why she locked up the way she locked up. The guns didn't affect her, which there was a lot of shooting. I shot over a box, everyone shot over a box of shells, I'd say, or close to it. There was four of us. There was a lot of shooting, a lot of birds, a lot of excitement. None of that stuff overwhelmed her. I know it wasn't that. Uh, she, she got excited as the shooting happened. She watched birds. The positive, one of the real positives that we took away from this hunt was, and, and I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but at a certain point, not very far into the hunt, I finally said to Ben, I'm not going to send her anymore because it's just pissing me off. And my anger, my lack of patience, my inability to handle the situation well was creating more stress on her and creating her to shut down even more than she had already shut down. So I, we said that it was the best thing we could have done. We put her up into the kennel. And what was nice about that was because I wasn't looking to send her on anything, which up until this point, she had not marked a bird down well, not once in the f three or four hunts prior and including this, this, the, this hunt in that morning. She hadn't connected the idea of watching the sky, watching the birds hit the ground and then go get them, which is what we've trained for. We trained for some marking. We trained for her always seeing stuff. Um, it wasn't like we were setting these up as memories. So every retrieve I was sending her on were blinds. What she's, it's probably her least efficient way of making a retrieve at this point because she doesn't handle that well. She doesn't handle well enough to be sending her confidently on blinds. And that's okay. I'm, I have no problem with any of that stuff. It's recognizing it and being realistic with it. So we're trying to send her on more challenging things that probably is a little bit above where she really is right now. And then you couple that with the conditions being really intimidating to her and overwhelming. And then you combine that with my lack of patience. And we had a real shit show. We had a real disaster on our hands. So it, we didn't go backwards, which I'm really glad. We could have. I could have. If in my younger years, I, we probably would have gone backwards because I probably wouldn't have been able to recognize the decision that we needed to make, which was put her in the blind and just let her watch. The beauty of that was, and it wasn't necessarily, I didn't know that this would happen, but it did. She started to watch birds and mark birds down and actually want to go make retrieves, which prior to that, I'm sending her on blind retrieves and she does not want to go. It, she made it really clear. Like she got to the point where she hated the water and she wanted to stay on these little boggy islands. So I'd send her out and she just, eventually I'd get her, I'd have to send her and send her, build up her excitement. And, Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, go back, go back, go back. And I'd get her excited and finally she couldn't help it anymore. She'd go. But the thing that she would do is she'd go right for the first clump of grass that she could get up out of the water. And then she'd sit there and just push herself to want to take that next step again. Take that next leap, take that next jump. And a lot of times I couldn't push her to do it. I couldn't excite her enough to do it. It wasn't. The confidence was so jeopardized at that point. It was so watered down that she couldn't find it in her to push herself out. Now she made a few retrieves. Um, they were easy. I helped her. I threw some things at ducks that were down in the water to give her a splash, to give her a mark and center. She picked those up reluctantly, but she picked those up. What it showed me was her, what she has in her is, is, is great and it was enough to overcome all the stuff that I had put on her that made it so difficult, which was new conditions, too much pressure, anger, frustration on my part. The conditions were not only new, but challenging, real challenging. Um, you know, it's just in order, one of the things that we talked about with Ben and I talked about and the guys that were there, I said, this is the shit I gotta go training right now. Like I need to come back here and do some training so that she gets you, so that this, this stuff, the elements that are getting in the way don't become an issue. Like they are, they're normal. They become normal. What, what the challenges would be are the uncertain circumstances. Like what are the birds doing? Are they cripples? Do they swim? Do they fall dead? Do they fall into certain spots? Do they, does she mark them? Does she not mark them? All of those things are things you can't control on a hunt. The things you can control in training are the conditions that you send the dog through, pushing the dog through certain types of cover. This, is, this was all 100% new to her. And my mistake was not understanding that 
And part of the part of the problem was is I wasn't sure what we were getting ourselves into. I'd never been there before, so this isn't the first time that I've hunted in a new spot and r realized this isn't what I had expected or planned. Me personally, I usually can adjust to it. With a young older dog, you usually can adjust to it based on experience. With a young dog that doesn't have experience, what do you draw off of? So it was something that we really set ourselves up to have a challenge and almost set ourselves up to be not successful with. Now, I don't think we weren't successful. I think we had success. Um, we had success because we learned a lot. Um, we, we did get a few nice retrieves. We did get a few things that were positive where she started to connect the idea of watching birds in the sky. Now, what, what, what I hindsight we, we should have done is I definitely should have brought a second dog. Because dogs like Ellie, dogs like Taylor, Spry probably not, because that would have been too much for Spry, and Spry's three and a half years old. Never been in that type of a situation before. Not duck hunted very often. Not the right spot for me to even take Spry. I, I know that, I recognize that. Especially after seeing poor Bella struggle through it. Ellie, I think, would have had a fighting chance and she would have she would have figured it out. She'd have struggled to start out with. I'd have had to do some things to get her comfortable and get her understanding this game of what it looked like on that field. But she has enough experience, confidence, drive, enthusiasm, she to overcome it. I'm certain of that. Taylor, same thing. And what I really wish I'd have had is one of those two dogs for two reasons. It would have made our life a lot easier picking birds because we ended up picking birds ourselves. The second thing is, and we lost two birds. We lost two birds that were crippled that I think if we had had one of those older dogs, we'd have found them. I'm, I, I'm real confident we would have. So from a, from a standpoint of like the conservation aspect, I wish we had had another dog with us. But the other thing I think it would have done for Bella is I think it would have helped her develop some confidence in that setting, which is normally I say, which is my mindset going into it was don't bring another dog because just focus on Bella. Just allow her to main, get all the opportunity and re get all the attention and get my focus 100%. But because the situation was what it was, I could have used another dog to build some, I think almost some competitiveness. It won't, I, when I say competitiveness, not like who gets there first, not who gets to steal the bird away from the other dog, not that way. The idea of she watches another dog making retrieves in this crummy, crappy environment. And she goes, I wanna do that too. She literally saw birds on the water and couldn't muster up the ability to overcome how the physical setup, the uncomfortableness of that setup with on top of me being a little pissed off at times. I'm gonna admit it, I'm embarrassed to say it. I'll admit it, I lost my cool. I was really frustrated. So, you know, Today, my level of losing my cool is nothing like my level of losing my cool five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago when I first started training. So I say that to you and I, I, some people might look at it and go, man, he's way more patient than I would have been. I'm still disappointed in it. I, I, that's me being honest with you and saying, I need to get better. I have to continue to get better and improve. I have to recognize this stuff. Now, when it comes to the video, Ben, Ben, Ben edited some of it up because we ended up putting the camera away. It started raining, so we put the camera away because of that. We put the camera away because we really weren't doing anything with Bella, and we we just went, let's just put the camera away. Part of the frustration was trying to because we were filming it. That was on my end. Part of my frustration was I know we're filming this right now, and she looks like shit, and that pisses me off. So putting the camera away was removing one layer of challenge. I didn't even talk about that. You know, all these layers of challenge that we had, plus we're trying to put it on film and make it look good. And why are we making it look good? So we can show people. And why do we want to show people? Well, what you're going to see is a couple things. And if you watch Bella Be Good, you'll, you'll see this. It'll be, it's just going to be one of, the, one of the episodes. But I, Ben edited it, and he did a really nice job with it. Pieced together what we had. It was really incomplete because we didn't really finish it. We didn't really film an ending to it. Um, you know... I told him, I said, let's do a podcast on it because I think the podcast will help explain and tie the, tie the things together, connect some dots on it. So when we first started out, 
things were okay. There was a definite sense of uncomfortableness with the dog. But so Ben's got that footage and we show that and you know, I had to help her. I helped her quite a bit. I had to, to do things to get her to make a few picks to pick a few of these birds, but we did it and that's okay. I, I'll, I'll be the first person to say it's never going to be like super fancy. It's never going to look great with it with a dog on her third hunt. It doesn't even look great in training yet. So how do I expect it to be transitioned to the hunt perfectly, right? So it's it's all part of the process. I don't have an issue with, with showing it to you. In fact, I enjoy showing it to you. The reason is, is because I get more people saying positive things about, it's nice to see your struggles because my struggles are 10 times that. And it's nice to see you have them too. I got news for you. Everybody struggles. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to not show it. What we are going to do is we're going to be, I, I told Ben, I said, I want to do this. He put the video together. It was incomplete. I said, we got to figure out how to complete it. It's not because of his editing. It's because we didn't have enough footage because we didn't really end it. We never really ended the hunt. So what I said was, I want to do two things. It was hard for me to watch a lot of those parts because I got frustrated and I show it and we see and you see it. It's hard for me to stomach that because I'm disappointed in myself as a trainer, first off. It's still frustrating to see the struggles, but now I take a step back from it and I go, I understand all the problems. The problems were the situation, the environment, the, what I did to set up Bella to not have success. So shame on me, okay? I'll take the fall. I'm a big guy. I can take that hit. What I told Ben was, I want to do two things. I wanted to edit it. We made a few retrieves. I want you to edit it up so that it looks like everything went good. I want, us, I want this hunt to look really nice. It'll be short and sweet because we only did a few, but let's edit it and show how well she worked and made retrieves. And then I want people to see that. And then I want him to say, okay, that's, and I want, I want to make the point on this podcast, we could post that just like that. We could post it as a Belly Be Good episode. We can do a podcast about it and talk about how we made, you know, we struggled a little bit, but all in all things were good. And you would watch that video and you go, man, that looked pretty good. That's what social media does for a lot of training. Everything looks good. People don't show stuff that doesn't look good because it's uncomfortable, it's awkward, it's embarrassing. It's the truth. So we're going to show it to you how I could have made it look, and then we're going to show it to you how it really looks. It's going to be part of the episode. I recommend you watch it. You're going to see the struggles. You're going to see the things that I've just been talking about. You're going to see all the crap that actually happened. And then I'm going to tell you I'll learn from it. I'll learn from watching it. I'll, I learned that day from it. We'll get better. We'll continue to work on the things that we need to work on. But I wanted to do that episode so that you can see just how easily things can look real good and perfect when it really didn't happen that way. And it goes back to some of the things that we've talked about in the past in podcasts. We've talked about worried about what other people think. We're worried about, you know, we're worried about comparing, making comparisons. I want you to compare yourself if you're in that boat to the first video and you'll feel like you'll feel like crap. Because you'll go, man, my my dog isn't doing that. It's older. My dog isn't doing that. She's the same age. I, I watched Bella. We, did, we went through the same struggles. And Bella, look how good Bella is now. And then I want you to see the shit that she did. The pissed off Jeremy. All the stuff that you're going to go, no, that's more like it. That's what I go through too. But I also want you to understand that's not where it ends. We're not done. We're not finished with this. We continue to grow. We continue to develop. We continue to work on the stuff that we don't do that well. And I can guarantee you, it'll get good. It'll get really good by the time we're done. But I also look at it and I go, I've got more time to put in. We've got more work to do. We've got more things to work on. We've got, some of it is going to be strictly experience. Some of it is going to be preparing for those experiences to make sure that when we get there, we get the most out of them. I'm going to go back and I'm going to end it on a positive note because I'm going to say, we shot the shit out of those birds. We killed a bunch of them. Not once did Bella even make a peep or a sound or a break or a creep or an, any issue. None whatsoever. I've been on hunts where dogs retrieve like you wouldn't believe, but there's such a pain in the ass 
that I would rather have had them left home. I, I've seen dogs like that. I can't say that I've had one like that. Um, but I also have not hunted dogs as early as some do. I think some of that comes from hunting dogs early. Going into the field with half a toolbox and the t half that you have, the tools you have are fired up retriever that will run through brick walls. That's great. But if you can't keep them quiet and they break and they flare and they're dangerous to have in a blind and they're no fun to have with, I don't want them, period. I would rather bring a dog out and have them do what Bella did. Now this is my preference. Some people might be listening to this and go, I don't give a shit about a dog that's quiet or calm or steady. I want a dog that'll pick up every duck because I don't want to go pick them up myself. Well, that's fine. It's just a different goal that you have than what we have. And I'm not saying yours is wrong. I'm saying it's different. And I think, I think it depends on what you're after. I look at it this way. I've got what I want in this dog in a lot of aspects. I've got to get a lot of aspects built up further, developed, sharpened, honed further than what we have right now. I also look at this hunt and I go on a level of, on a scale of one to 10 of difficulty, I think my older dogs would have struggled with it to start out with for sure. It was a tough hunt. Real tough. And so we took this we took this middle schooler and we put her into a varsity game. And we asked her to perform at varsity level when I first got there. And I quickly had to realize, you're a dumbass. You shouldn't have been done this. We should have done this differently. And we made adjustments. And there was nothing wrong with it. But I want you to see it. And that's why, we're, that's why we're doing what we're doing with this Bella Be Good series. You've seen some real highs. You've seen some real lows if you've watched them. You've seen most of the time we're somewhere in the middle. This, I don't know that I would say it's a real low or a real high. It's somewhere in the middle. But if you just watched this episode and said, do you want this guy to train your dog? If you asked me that, I'd say, maybe not. Because it looked that bad in a lot of respects. But I, I, can, I can very easily look back on it and pick out the reasons why. And because I can pick out the reasons why, now I got a chance to go fix those and build on those, make those better. And when we do that, that's where we're gonna take steps forward. That's where we're gonna make progress. So this is gonna be, this, you know, this podcast is kind of recapping and maybe a little opportunity it's maybe a little opportunity for me to vent and let you guys know where we're at. I, a lot of people have asked, well, curious to see how is the hunting going. Now, so that was a struggle in, in that duck blind. I, will, I like positive stuff too. Then Ben and I, what, we went the next day, didn't we? We went up to Rhinelander the next day. We went, up to my, we went up to our cabin and I put a little slave labor on Ben and he helped, helped me put a roof on. And in the afternoon, we went grouse hunting, and we took Ellie and we took Bella. And Bella worked fantastic. Bella and Ellie worked just beautifully together. We, we shot woodcock. We shot four woodcock and four grouse in two and a half hours. It was one of the best hunts I've been on. It was the day after the worst hunt I've been on with her ever. Now, it's totally different hunting. <laughs> but think about it. You know, I'm just verbalizing this out loud. Bella's up hunted grouse and woodcock dozens of times this wasn't her second third fourth hunt this wasn't in conditions that she's never been in this is a, this is starting to get to be normal for her it's old hat for her the first few times i hunted her weren't nearly as good as this hunt she handled like a she handled like a dream i mean how many how many rabbits did we jump that hunt yeah now Fun. she got on she got we jumped these these snowshoe hares and she got on them Ellie doesn't even chase him. Ellie's so used to not being interested in him. Ben jumped a snowshoe right in front of him, and Ellie trailed it for five yards, he said, and just he didn't even have to call her off. She just stopped and let it go. Now, Bella's got a little more zip to her. She wants to go after these snowshoe hares. I stopped her twice on the whistle, hot on the trail of a snowshoe hare. So that's real responsive. That's real nice control. That's great foundational stuff, transferring into the field. But it's a situation that she's been in a dozen times, and she's a... She's four times, if she's duck hunted three times and 
in, in Upland 112, she's done this four times as many times. I'll be interested to see her on her 12th duck hunt, which we'll get to. But it takes time and it, and it takes recognition and it takes understanding on our part as the handler. And it takes, you know, if we weren't doing the Bellaby Good series, you'll never, you would never see this because I'm not going to brag about this one. I'm not going to brag about this hunt. I wouldn't brag about it and be sharing it on social media. If we did, which I know a lot of people do, if we did, we would we would show the first part of this Bella Be Good series. We'd show the highlights. We'd show the few retrieves that she made. We'd show the flurry of birds and shooting that she's steady as a we She'd look like a really, really nice polished retriever. But that's really not what happened. That's what happened for a small part of it. And other things happened for small parts of it. And other things happened for small parts of it. And quite honestly, big parts of it weren't very good. We're going to show you. I want to show you. I want you to see it. I want you to understand. And I'll take all the criticism you got that YouTube wants to throw at me. Because YouTube is where we'll hear it. I'll hear, I'll hear it from the from the armchair quarterbacks of what I should have done. Yeah, I fucking know what I should have done. Let's be honest. I'm being honest with you. It never goes perfectly for me. Will we do better next time? For sure. Will she be better for it? For sure. And again, I'll reiterate the idea that training a dog is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I'll reiterate the fact that I could care less what the score is at halftime. I care about it at the end of the game. So you guys, I hope you're able to get something out of this. Um, we're, we thought, I thought about it for a little while. And went, How, what's the best way to utilize this? And so we want to share it. We want to be transparent. We don't have a problem doing that. We want you to see we struggle just like you guys do. Okay. And so keep working on your stuff. Keep recognizing your shortfalls. Keep understanding that things don't always go good. And that's okay. It's what you do when they don't go well. That's what makes or breaks you. It's what you do when things go well. Now, I'll be the first person to say it. I celebrate the good stuff. I felt really good after that hunt on Sunday with Ben and those two dogs and we shot those birds. Things went well. We shot the guns well. The birds held tight. The dogs worked well. The control, I, all plus, 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 plus. I don't know that there was a negative in that hunt. And we celebrated. We had a few old fashions. We went and got steak. I mean, it was, it was a hell of a day. Coming off of the day before where we were in the basement when it came to working the dog. But you know what? We had great, we had a lot of really nice plucked wood ducks that I did wood duck breasts and eggs. And I celebrated that hunt too. And I was feeling, I took, we took some beautiful pictures. I, I made memories with my son that I'll never forget. So even in the lows, you know, I could bitch about that hunt all I want. But I'll tell you right now, there were some lows, but there were some damn big highs too. There were some mountaintop highs. So it's what do you what do you take away from it? What do you take away from each session? What do you take away from each opportunity? What do you learn from it? What do you apply towards the next? That's I think the big key in continuing to improve and moving forward. We didn't go backwards. That's what's that's maybe the most important part of that. We didn't we didn't we didn't take huge steps forward, but we kept moving. And I would say we were in forward progress. It was slow, it was a crawl, but we moved forward a little bit. Okay guys. That's it for this one. Stay positive, okay? Uh, keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate the support. If you do me a favor, if you would, wouldn't mind rating the podcast, if you have an app that you're on, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with someone that you think it might help, um, we really appreciate your support. So thank you for doing that, and we'll keep doing these.